Hey everybody, welcome to a very important video spurned on by uh, a conversation that we had on the stream the other day. It's a tier list of common household appliances. What spurned the conversation? Would you rather have a refrigerator or a toilet? It was a simple question, assuming the toilet also had running water. I said the toilet, and it was contentious, and it inspired a bunch of follow-up questions that spun out from there. So, uh, a member of the community, also video editor, Sir Toasty Toes, you can see right there, um, made this list. There are something like 34 common household appliances or gadgets on here, uh, and, and we're going to rank them on a tier list. Seven tiers. Astounding meaning can't live without it. God-awful meaning, I don't know, either useless or only useful for one specific thing. And I want to say a couple of things here as a caveat, because I know people are going to be upset. The first one is there's cultural differences, you know? Some uh, people might value air conditioning more because of where they live. Some people might value ceiling fans more because of where they live. Some people might not see the value of a dishwasher because they never have one. Some people might say, you know, a toaster oven means you don't need a stove. That's the purpose of this whole conversation. I run a bakery. I can't live without my stand mixer. I get it. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is we're here to have fun. Don't get... If you, if you own... Uh, Coffee maker, supply company, it's not my intention to put you out of business. Um, I forgot what I was also going to say. Oh, that, no, I have one point I wanted to make first, which is nothing on the list is can't live without it, literally. I just want to get in front of that. I know people are going to be like, well, you could live without anything on the list because, you know, humans have existed for hundreds of thousands of years without having access to, you know, a hot plate. You're not as smart as you think you are. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying you can't live without it from a modern, current context. Okay, let's begin. I believe we are starting with an air conditioner. This is a tough one for me because it's kind of a fringe case right off the bat. I live in Canada. It gets hot. It doesn't not get hot here just because it doesn't get as hot as it does on, uh, you know, in the middle of Arizona or something like that doesn't mean the AC is not warranted. Most places in Vancouver don't have air conditioners, but they're kind of trending towards getting them in the future. Like we have central air. Um... So, like, because we have air kind of, like, built into the house, we don't need a stand air conditioner or a portable air conditioner. That being said, um, I would say that if you live in a place with hot summers, I wouldn't say AC is essential. Like, even we, our AC was broken for, like, three months at the start of the summer. Um, well, like, all the summer until the start of August, basically. Um, but we lived because we had fans. But I would say AC is very nice to have. I would put this in the good range. Depending on where you live, this might be a divisive one for sure. Bathtub. This is a tricky one. It's tricky because I do like a bath. However, I don't like a bath as much as a shower. That's not even close. I mean, here's a, the, the, we have shower coming up later. A shower is substantially superior for me for a couple of reasons. If you can only have one. Much faster. Uh... You know, you don't have to fill it up. You just get in when the water gets hot, which sometimes takes 10 seconds, sometimes takes 30 seconds. Um, much more effective at shooting soap off of you and shooting water off of you. Uh, or, you know, you know what I mean. You know, getting dirt off of you because you're getting hit with a high-pressure spray instead of exclusively just kind of soaking in it. And honestly, I don't know, maybe I have like a heart condition or something, but I just don't like being in a bath that much. Like, like a warm bath... If you've been, you know, working out or skiing or something like that, sure. Feels very nice to soak. But after, like, 10 minutes, I just start to, like, sweat in the bathtub. And I'm like, this isn't what I'm here for, you know? I thought I was, I thought I was here to get clean. So I, I don't think it's bad. But I think it's a little bad. <laughs> um, now we get into some stuff that's going to aggravate people as well. I don't respect the blender. Um... I use a blender bottle frequently. A blender bottle is not very good at blending things that are hard. You know, you can't blend ice cubes or frozen fruits in it very well. Um, but I just, the thing for me, I like a blended drink. But I'll just, like, I drink them so infrequently, I'll just get them out. You know what I mean? I'll get them from a booster juice or something. Um, I, I don't like a blender just because, I mean, it's got a couple of things I don't like. It's got a very niche usage. 
only really useful for like smoothies or, or making maybe like a really fine dough or something like that or batter I should say um margaritas I suppose but it's noisy like nobody's like hey what are they doing in uh you know the next apartment they're always like oh they're making margaritas um and then also, I hate cleaning a blender. I know that you can just sort of put soap and water in it and then spritz it up and then give it a rinse. But I don't know. I find it one of the more annoying things to clean. So I, I'm going to put the blender. I mean, I'm sure for some people you use this every day for breakfast. I do not. As a result, I'm putting it in the bad tier. And uh, I, I stand by that. A ceiling fan is very interesting. Uh, the way I understand it, ceiling fans are incredibly energy efficient i grew up with ceiling fans no ac just ceiling fans uh and then stand up fans which we'll get to a little bit later here um i uh i like them they're not really a substitute for air conditioning i do like them and honestly the noise of the fan is nice too but i gotta (sighs) there's there's benefits and drawbacks between this and a stand up or a desk fan right uh a ceiling fan is out of the way, doesn't need to be plugged into the wall. It generates a current of air that ranges from like light to pretty strong. That's what you're looking for. However, it's got those three strings. You know, one of them is the light bulb. One of them is like faster. What's the other one? I don't know what, nobody ever knows what the third one does. I still don't know what the third one does. I'm I'm 31 years old. Um, like up opposite direction? What is the opposite direction, dude? Is that even? I don't. I don't. I have no idea. Um, but then the other thing is, most ceiling fans I've experienced in my life, level one, copacetic. Level two, not bad. Level three, you start to think that it's gonna come off the ceiling. It goes like, wham, 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 and it's like wavering up and down. Um, so it's. I, I would prefer most of the time like a stand up fan. I think I would. I would put these again. This is a tough one. We've been talking about it for like four minutes. I'm going to put these in the middle range because temperature, for me, temperature modulation beats culinary usefulness. I think temperature modulation is very important in a home. Now, I'm going to surprise you a little bit here. Coffee maker. Uh, I have one. I never use it. I, I think that if you like hot coffee and you drink it every day, you're going to want one of these, of course, obviously, or you can go to Starbucks every day, I guess. But in that sense, you know, and I don't want to draw this distinction constantly, but in that sense, um, you know, this is actually one of the easier ones to live without because it might cost you like two bucks a day to get coffee out. It's not like it's hard to get coffee out. If you have uh, like no washer and dryer or no refrigerator, like that's more annoying because like doing your laundry outside costs money, but is also a chore that takes up like a lot of time. So um, I think it's a, a it's something you can go without. And I also like, honestly, we have a cold brew kit. It's really just like a plastic reservoir. And then you put like water and ground coffee into it with a filter. You let it sit for like half a day and then you drain it into a glass pitcher. And I much prefer that. I think cold coffee is better than hot coffee. This just tastes like like warm acid to me now most of the time, like a drip coffee maker. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say that it's a little bad, but I'm going to put a caveat in here. If you're going to have hot coffee, I think there are better options than this thing right here. Unless you're, if you're making it for two people or more, this might be a good go-to for you. Um, but if you're just making it for yourself, let me, let me suggest that instead of using this son of a gun, you, you invest in like a $10 French press or something like that. You, you, ground, you grind the coffee or buy it pre-ground. You, you put it in the French press. You know, you, you, you get boiling water via kettle or, you know, even the microwave, I guess. You pour it over top. You let it simmer for a few minutes. You push down. You pour it. You got a much nicer cup of coffee then you're going to get from this, and it's not going to wake up your whole house going, eep, eep. Now, we're getting into some obvious ones, okay? Desktop PC, absolutely astounding. There's a little bit of selfishness here. I need this to do my job, but it's such an unbelievable tool. You know, this is not just PC gaming. This is how you look at your finances and pay your bills, for some people, it's going to be, you know, business, obviously, not just streaming, recording, but emails, especially during the pandemic, Zoom and stuff like that, how you keep in touch with your family, all sorts of stuff. It's maybe how you do your shopping. You can do some of it on a phone, 
But for me, this is like indispensable. I would rather lose almost everything on this list than lose my PC, I think. So I don't even think we need to talk about that. I just wanted to say it's not just for gaming. Probably got no games. Um, dishwasher. I've lived in, uh, since living in Vancouver, I lived in two places that had a dishwasher, two places that didn't. Our current place had a dishwasher. Um, I used to think that the dishwasher was a little bad because it's not like it does the chore for you. You still got to pre-rinse and get like all the detritus off the dish. Otherwise, it gets stuck in the weird filter. and It gets gross over the course of years and years. But anyway, um, and you got to unload and load it. But it, it, I'm an idiot. I'm basically an idiot. It saves so much time. I would say that this is one of the things on the list is actually easier to go without. Like, I would much rather go without a dishwasher than a washing machine, for sure. But I think it's better than a little bad or middle. I would say it's good. Less indispensable than some of these, but a big quality of life improvement. I mean, this might save you 15 to 20 minutes a day. That's good eats. You know, that adds up. So this is a dryer. I'm like, is, is there... Yeah, because this is the washer. Okay. I, I'm not sure if it's in alphabetical order. It might... Yeah, it's probably shower, sink, stand, mixer, stove. Okay, it is. So this would be dryer. And this is, I'm assuming, desk fan or something. Anyway. Um, dryer... Here's the thing. It's not as important as a washer. You're not... It happens, but very rarely are you going to be like, ah, just toss it in the dryer, right? It's a, it's a combination thing. But... You can much more easily do without a dryer than a washer. You could hang up your clothes on a clothesline or something. Uh, you can get one of those indoor clotheslines where you can stand your clothes up. Uh, that's what I had to use when I lived in Korea. Uh, it's not ideal. I'd rather have a dryer. But I would say a dryer. I mean, it's... Look, I'm going to adjust my rankings immediately, okay? I'm going to I'm going to bring dishwasher down in the middle range because when I think about it, what would I rather live without, my dryer or my dishwasher? It's my dishwasher, 10 out of 10. But then, like so dryer comes up here, I'm like what would I rather live without, my dryer or my washer? It's not even close. I would rather have my washer in the home. I know I could do stuff, I could use the laundry facilities elsewhere and I've done it before. But it's very, very convenient. It saves you maybe, you know, a couple hours every time you do the laundry and a little bit of money as well. Um, but what would I rather lose, my PC or my washer? I'd rather go to the laundromat two times a week and have my PC. So, I think we've got this settled here. I like the, I like the way the rankings look here. Direct your anger in the comments below. I do have to say, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what this is. So you know what I'm going to do? Check this out. This, this is new tech, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on my intermission screen temporarily. And I'm going to ask the creator. I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to go uh, to my server. And I'm going to go to miscellaneous. And I'm going to add Sir Toast, who appears to be offline. You know what? I'll just ask everybody. Hey, everybody. But also Sir Toasty, what is the thing next to the fridge on the tier list for household appliances? And then I will send them the link because I'm the only person, only me and mods are able to link on the uh, <laughs> in the Discord, which I think is good for information security. All right, let's let's await an answer here. What is this? My, no, not a microwave. That is not a microwave. I do see the microwave on there. Paper shredder. You think so? To me, it looks like some kind of space space heater. Heater. Heater makes sense alphabetically. Thank you. Okay, so that's good eats, dude. That's, that's new technology. Um, take me back to main gameplay, please. All right, that, that was just an aside here. There we go. Anyway, stand-up fan. I'm going to be honest. I prefer a stand-up fan to a ceiling fan. 
So I, I, I don't mind putting the stand-up fan in the good range. And I'm looking at what it's there with, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I like it up here. The fans, we got fans in like April when our AC was down for a long time. It saved our lives. We would have never gotten any sleep, which is especially bad considering, you know, my wife is pregnant. So, you know, this, I, I could not disrespect it by putting it any lower than this. Why is it better than a ceiling fan? It's more annoying because you got to lift it around and, you know, put it where you want it. But it also gives you a concentrated burst of cold air instead of just like making the whole room windy. I like it. Chest freezer. There's a huge caveat here that I'm going to acknowledge, okay? We do not live in an establishment, in a domicile, that makes a chest freezer plausible. We don't have an unfinished basement or, you know, like a, a room where we could really plug one of these in and have it not compromise our space greatly. So I do, I have lived in situations with the chest freezer. My parents had one for a while. My grandparents had one forever. They love it because you, you buy meat when it's on sale or other, you know, frozen foods. And then you probably save like a lot of money by doing that. You know, if you can buy something 20 or 30% off uh, that you eat a lot of and save it in your chest freezer, you know, you're saving maybe like a few bucks every time you eat it. Um, but I will say... For the most part, we're not freezer people. We don't use our freezer all that much for frozen desserts and stuff like that. And then occasionally, like, really the only time we end up using our freezer is if, like, Kate's mom will, like, give us meat. <laughs> which which happens fairly frequently. <laughs> She'll just come over with a bunch of, like, you know, Korean barbecue stuff that we store. But apart from that, you know, we're not really, uh, we're not really those kind of, of folks. So I would put this in the, the little bad tier. But I would also definitely acknowledge that... Uh, that's our dishwasher making that noise, by the way. <laughs> I would also definitely acknowledge that uh, this could be a situation where, depending on where you live, if you're a hunter or a fisher person... I don't know, you don't say fisherman, right? Uh, beast me. Either way, I can understand your use for this. Or if you buy stuff in bulk, maybe you got a big family and you you know it's a good way to save a lot of money on your grocery bill. Um, but inessential, I think, is a good way to describe it. It's not as bad as a blender. Now, um, refrigerator, freezer combination. I got to be honest, it's really good. I know I said I'd rather have a toilet. It's close. I would put the refrigerator up here in astounding. I think people thought... Because the question was really, what's easier to live without? And for me, I think it'd be easier to live without the refrigerator. I understand it's coming from a position of privilege. I could eat out more often. I already eat a lot of, like, dry non-perishable meals <laughs> and you know i'm in close proximity to a grocery store so you know you don't need a refrigerator necessarily but it is at the tippy tippy top you know i people were they were i was losing my mind people were like what are you gonna eat just nuts all day i'm like nah dude i'll just go to the grocery store once a day buy some food to cook cook it enough that just makes enough for me to eat it right then and then eat it and then i'm done you don't just have to eat, you know, chocolate bars if you don't have a refrigerator, but you do have to go to the grocery store constantly, which would be very annoying. That being said, anyway, I'm arguing like against the fridge. That's not what I'm looking for. Who, but who doesn't agree that a fridge is essential? It's one of the most essential appliances in the home. There you go. Um, everybody likes a fridge. Now, if you separated the fridge and freezer portion, fridge, astounding, freezer, I'm going to say merely good, but that's, I leave that as an aside. But better than a chest freezer because it comes attached to something that's good. Space heater. I'm going to say this is middle range. Um, rarely does it get so cold in Vancouver that I would use something like this. You know, we have heat in our, in our house. Um, but I did used to use this when I lived in a colder place. And then what I would do is, and it's very energy wasteful, but forgive me, I was like 10 years old. I would get out of the shower in the morning crank the space heater and then like sit in front of the space heater while I dried off it got you nice and toasty in like minus 20 degree weather um all I would say about this is that I mean we don't have a big use for it and then secondarily I get warm easier than I get cold if I get cold and I think this is a common philosophy if I get cold I'd rather just put on a sweater um 
or a sweatshirt or you know long pants or you know woolly socks rather than like if I get hot what am I going to do I need a fan because I'm not going to just sit around naked all day um mostly for my own comfort level but also I don't want to have to you know vacuum my hair off the couch every uh every two days so that's too much information but that shows you i mean i understand temperature regulation very important for me heater is much below things that cool hot plate so i've had uh i've had a portable hot plate when i've lived in some places that didn't have a real kitchen and just had a kitchenette i think it's fine but it's a strictly inferior stove um so here's what i'm gonna say this is it's much like a blender this is like bad uh it might even be god awful (laughs) but i'm gonna put it in the bad tier with a caveat the caveat is if you're in a situation you know where you're living in like a micro suite or something like that and you don't have your own kitchen um a sink plus a hot plate will get you through in a pinch but it sucks big time compared to a stove i mean oh my god it's not even close, especially because like one one element doesn't allow you that much flexibility. I mean, if you got a hot plate, you probably don't have an oven. <laughs> I'm guessing like we give you an oven, but no range on top of it anyway. So you can only really heat up one thing at a time. But I guess if you're making like instant noodles or something like that, Kraft macaroni and cheese, it could be OK in a pinch, but but only in a pinch. If I went over to like an adult's house and it had a kitchen, and they also had a hot plate, I would be like, what's going on? So I'm going to tell you straight up, I, an ironing board, I have no respect for the iron or the ironing board. I'm going to lump them all in here, because um, I, I don't see a reason to separate them, quite frankly. Um, I just, I, I never use it, but I recognize it's because I work from home and I don't have to wear suits. Occasionally, I do have to iron things, but it's like once every two years. It's like weddings and funerals, right? That's it. Um, so I'm going to put this again in bad tier. But this one is like with the full knowledge. The, the, the only thing I will say is like an ironing board. I think you got to raise it up a little bit. Because like what else is going to do what an iron and an ironing board does? You'd have to take it to like a, you know, a laundry place to do it for you. So I, I think uh, I'm going to put it up there. Because it, it's the only thing that does what it does. Unless you want to put like a... A hot stove, a hot stone in the oven, <laughs> and then iron your clothes like that. Now, the microwave is very contentious. I I said this on stream, and people were a little upset. The only thing I use our microwave for is making popcorn, and then secondly, if I have two things in the oven, I will use the separate timer. I won't turn the microwave on and get it going, but I'll use the other timer on the microwave. So I can have an oven timer and a microwave timer. I could just use my phone. That's not a vote in favor of the microwave. Um, It is probably my least favorite kitchen appliance, I would say. Um, It does have its uses. I will also acknowledge I'm kind of a weirdo. I don't heat up leftovers most of the time before I eat them, which means that I don't respect the, the microwave as much as most people do. Uh, in that, like, with that in mind, I actually probably rate the microwave pretty low. I, some people in my chat were saying they'd rather have a microwave instead of a stove, and that scared the crap out of me. Like, I get you can make a variety of foods in the microwave, don't get me wrong. But I was like, what do you, what do you, you're gonna get like a, like a chicken breast, and you're gonna microwave it on a plate for like six minutes or something like that? It's insane. The stove is strictly superior. So we're gonna, we're gonna put the microwave, I'm gonna say, it's not a... I, I think it's like the little bad tier. And I'm going to say it's like the inverter of the ironing board. Because everything that the microwave does can be done by another appliance. The iron and the ironing board are the only things that do what they do. And I rank them low because I don't do it often. The microwave, on the other hand, is like it heats things up, but it doesn't heat them up as nicely as the oven. It just heats them up faster. It cooks things, but it doesn't cook them as well as you could cook them on a stove. You know, the only thing is like popcorn, but you can make popcorn on the stove too. So I think the microwave, a little bad for me. That one's going to hurt some people, I know for sure. Um, Home stereo. This is motivated by selfish reasons, but I must first off, if you got this home stereo, I hope you accept that this belongs in the god awful tier. But even like 
a nice home stereo. Forgive me for what I'm about to say. I lived forever in shared accommodations. Multiple people under the same roof. Apartment complexes where you're next to your neighbors. These things are the bane of your existence. There's only, like, the number of noise complaints I've had in my life against other apartments. 99.9% caused by home stereo subwoofers. Literally 0.1% after the Raptors won the championship last year. My neighbors across the hall from me got addicted to playing basketball inside uh, on their hardwood in this, like, our all of our units were like 500 square feet and with only like six foot ceiling well not six that's insane but like seven or eight feet tall ceilings um i don't know what they were doing in there but they were just all day going dunk 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 but apart from that it's all home stereos so for me it's like if you're an appreciator of music sure and if you live separated from people like with space between your houses and you don't listen so loudly that it causes disturbances, no problem. Or you listen and it's loud and other people can hear it, but it's in reasonable time frames. I'm not like a bad neighbor. I don't look for reasons to get upset. It's only like after 1 a.m. and prior to like 8 a.m. when this thing's loud, I hate it. Um, but otherwise, like for me, I'll just listen to music on headphones. I'll listen to it coming out of my phone speaker, you know, if I if I want to hear it out loud. I'll put it on the TV. It's not great, but it's, you know, it gets the job done. This is trying to figure out which one's stove, which one's oven. You know what? I need to figure out what this is, too. Is that like a safe? <laughs> what is this thing? Hold on. Let me, let me go back to my intermission screen. That's why it's nice to have this sort of this window here. Let me go back. <clears throat> Just give me a moment here. Here we are. That's my dishwasher again. Okay. I got one more. What's next to... What's in between the stove and the instant pot? It's probably a paper shredder if it's the black box. Ah, okay. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense because it's in between oven and pressure cooker. It's in between... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, take me back to main gameplay. <laughs> All right. So, oven. I mean, is this stove then? No. I'm like, that's stove. Okay, I wasn't looking earlier. Um, oven. It's a better microwave, in my opinion, but a much worse stove. I could live without an oven pretty easily. It would compromise my life. I couldn't eat any baked things. I wouldn't eat any frozen pizzas or many frozen foods in general to begin with. But I would, I would say the oven is middle range. I would much rather only have access to the stove than the oven. It depends what else you got. Because I'm like, what do I use the oven for? Maybe like frozen french fries. But even then, you could cut up potatoes and you know, in the French fries, and you could just fry them yourself on the stovetop if you had to. Okay, what do you value more? A, an oven or a microwave? Microwave. You value the microwave more? Yeah. She does eat some Korean microwavable meals. And leftovers. I'll give her that. I put oven above it. I put oven way above it. What? What, what do you think about st stove versus oven? Oh, okay. Well, we're on the same page there. Washer versus dryer. Washer. You think the washer... Yeah, no, she's right. <laughs> I got confused for a second. I was like, washer? <laughs> then I was like, wait a minute. That's exactly what I said. All right. So I think the oven in the middle range, I would take it. Stove is going to be astounding, I think. It's the only thing you need for home cooking, I think, on average. Depends what you eat, I'll admit. But for me, the stove is king. Because the stove, the oven just bakes and broils. The stove sautés, simmers, boils. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It sears, you know? You, it, it does everything. Uh, and, and then, you know, a pan can do that. And a pot. You know, you can make anything in a pot that has that needs a little bit more height on it, for sure. Uh, it, it's not even close. But anyway, we're not talking about that yet. Paper shredder, 
I'll level with you. It's bad. We have one, and I use it, but, I mean, unless you're, like, really concerned about, like, your the sensitivity of your documents, I don't really, or you're trying to cover up, like, financial fraud or something, I don't see why you would need one of these in a home situation. Everybody's got sensitive documents, I guess. I just wonder what the risk is of somebody actually going through the average person's recycling to get this stuff. We got it as a precaution. It was like 10 bucks, and it works really well. But you could live without it easily. Um, I would still rather have it than a portable boombox. So the pressure cooker instant pot situation here, I have to be honest with you. Um, I can't in good conscience put this... Above an oven, I like ours. I used ours a lot, and it's a it's like a slow cooker except like fast. But the thing is, it's the same principle. You just kind of put the ingredients in there and let it go, and it works amazingly. Like I love the instant pot. Um, I I would use ours more, but honestly, like the reason I stopped is my wife's first trimester. She was very sensitive to like smells, so I didn't want to like cook something in the instant pot and make the whole apartment smell like carnitas for like three days. Um, so I would, I would say like, I value it more than the microwave, but in a general sense, I would say it's hard. It depends on, cause it's like a dishwasher. I think if you're going to cook like chili, you, you get the same value out of doing it in a pressure cooker or an instant pot that over doing it in like a big, uh, like a soup pot. What am I trying to, why can't I think of what a big pot is called with the two handles? Not a crock pot, but anyway. Um, you, you get as much convenience and, and deliciousness out of that as you do using a dishwasher to wash dishes instead of your hands. So, I, you know what? I am going to put it. I'm going to put it above the microwave. I, I would rather lose my microwave than lose my Instant Pot. My wife would be upset probably, though. A rice cooker is another one that's very divisive. Um, you can cook rice on the stovetop. Uh the rice cooker does it more consistently, uh, and if you get the ratio slightly wrong, I think it uses like a humidity sensor basically to tell when it's perfectly done. So it's consistent, and you can do a lot of like bulk rice in a very short amount of time relative to what it might take you on the stove. The real thing though, and if you don't own a rice cooker, you don't know, okay? The beauty of the rice cooker is that it's also a rice warmer. So if you eat rice, let's say, maybe you eat rice three times a week, four times a week, Monday to Friday, something like that. You cook the rice on Monday. It stays in the rice cooker warm 24 hours, 48 hours. I don't know how far you'd want to go beyond that. I know you're like, it's not safe. It's safe. It's hot as heck in there. But it keeps it pristine, so you, you're not taking hard rice out of the fridge and then trying to like return it into great rice. So really, the convenience of the rice cooker is not just cooking it, but it is rather also being able to quickly access the rice you have already cooked and have it be relatively consistent over the course of a couple of days instead of having to make a fresh batch every night or microwaving it. And don't kid yourself, microwave rice doesn't taste, pardon me, as good. That being said, could you live without it? Absolutely. But I'm glad we have ours. I think it's it's probably more useful than our Instant Pot, but depends who's cooking. Sewing machine. My grandma would be very upset at where I place this, okay? The thing is, I don't make my own clothes or quilts. So, I have no reason for a sewing machine. I can sew a little. My wife can sew a little better than me. We will tailor our own clothes sometimes, you know, darn a sock or like maybe an elbow comes out on a shirt or something like that. We'll sew it up. You don't need a sewing machine for it. You just need a needle and thread. The sewing machine is really for like more bulk, I guess, if you, if you got a, a larger project. Um, so I don't think uh, it's useless, but I think the number of times you're going to need to sew is pretty low for the average person. And the applications of those times are mostly going to be like just a little like yump, 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 you know? You're not going to need one of these where you go... I have used a sewing machine before. In sixth grade, we had to make hand puppets with paper mache heads and then put on a play we wrote ourselves. Did not like it. Anyway, but I'm not holding a grudge. The shower is not even close. Like, it's astounding. The thing is... 
is tough, okay? <laughs> it's real tough. Would I rather have a shower or a bathtub? Easy. I would rather have a shower. Not even close. No bathtubs. However, I'm also like, you could lose the shower, and if you only had a bathtub, you'd be inconvenienced, but you'd be okay. But I still think I gotta put it in astounding. It's that good. I mean, whether you... The, here's the trick question, right? What, do you prefer showers or baths? Probably like 95% of people said shower, 5% of people said baths. What do you take 7 days a week, 28 out of 30 days a year? A shower. Or a month, I meant. Not <laughs> 28 out of 30 days a year. You take a shower. The other two days, you might take a bath. I don't know. You might just stink up your office. I take a shower every day. Not because I'm worried about other people. It's because I smell bad if I don't shower every day. Everybody's got different tolerance levels for that. Um, but the shower is tippy top. I, I can, in good conscience, lower it from there. You could shower at the gym, but that's not really what this is about. Now, I feel bad because we're going heavy on the like astoundings. I would say a sink... Whether it's a kitchen sink, a bathroom sink, whatever, your your house is gotta have a sink. It actually might be more valuable than just about anything on this list if you ignore the fact that I use this for work and is necessary for you to even watch this video. Like I'm now, I'm thinking I'm like, man, would I rather have a would I rather have a shower no sink or a sink no shower? I would rather have a sink no shower one hundred percent. It would suck. I wet like a washcloth and wash myself, but it's doable. What am I going to do? Anytime I want a glass of water, I'm going to, I guess, buy it from the store or put, put my glass up to the shower head. <laughs> and like, how am I going to wash dishes if I don't have a dishwasher? I'm going to wash my dishes in the shower. Like, I think it could work, but I would much rather use the sink. So I think the sink's got to be up there. Kitchen sink. You, you rinse stuff out in it. You know, you rinse plates off in it. Um, bathroom sink, you brush your teeth in it. You wash your hands, obviously. It, it, you do the dishes in the kitchen sink. This is why they say everything but the kitchen sink. It's, it's that important. Stand mixer. As far as I'm concerned, this is bougie blender territory. If you are a baker, this is going to be at greater above tier for you. If you don't bake, you're like, what the heck is this thing? I don't need it. What am I making cookies 12 times a year? If you bake in your own bread, you might want something like this. My dad bakes his own bread. He's got a big one of these with all the attachments and stuff like that. Um, for me, it's not, it's not, I don't, I, the thing is, I don't think it's bad. Like, don't buy it. I think it's bad because it's not generalizable. You know, not everybody needs a blender or a paper shredder or a hot plate or a stand mixer. Most people are going to be like, I kind of want an ironing board, a microwave. Every, well, I mean, maybe not everybody. These are mostly niche, actually. <laughs> yeah. But everybody's like, I want a fridge and a sink. So that's, that's what I think about the stand mixer. It's just limited in its uses. But it could make not only cookies, it can make bread dough and pizza dough and pasta dough as well. If you're making a lot of doughs, you're going to want one probably. The stove. So I'm here's the here's the thing. I'm putting it in great even though it's the best cooking appliance. Why doesn't make why doesn't it make it to astounding? No computer, you could use your phone, but for me I'd be screwed. No fridge, you're screwed. No shower, if you have a bath, you're you're inconvenienced mightily. Otherwise, you're screwed. No sink. Honestly, the place probably is condemnable. Is my expectation if you don't have a sink and running water. The the stove. There's too many things. Like it's the best, but there's too many alternatives. If you lost this, you could survive with just an oven. You could survive with just a an oven and a microwave. You could survive with you know, a, an electric kettle. And, uh, you know, you could use that to make instant noodles or whatever. So, like, I, I think there's things that cover for the loss of this more. But it is the best cooking appliance, in my opinion. A lamp. Don't, don't tell my wife about this one. I think these are god-awful. We have light bulbs overhead. We got some, like, almost studio lighting, even though I don't have it set up very well. Um... We got, like, we got a good setup. We also have lamps. And the lamps are nice. But they're also, like, honestly, if you took them out of our place, I wouldn't notice probably for six months. I Like, in February. I'd be like, would you do something with that lamp? We got some nice lamps. Don't get me wrong. They set the ambiance. But, you know, 
food, temperature, cleanliness, you know, water, pretty important. Ambiance is pretty low. And then these all have something to do with ambiance. A home phone is just insanity. It, it, this is actually like worse than god awful. If you still have if you are in control of the phone situation at your own house and you have a home phone, why, oh my God, it's not just worse because you can't carry it around, it's worse because it rings and you can't, like, you can't stop this from being an inadvertent alarm clock. Maybe you could turn the ringer off, but who remembers to turn the ringer off? Because if somebody's phoning you at like 4 a.m., you kind of want to pick up. But you know, it goes to an answer. But like, it's just weird. The only reason I can see it that I'll allow here is, you know, I hear that like maybe if you're a little tight on funds, a home phone is insanely cheap to have set up and a cell phone, of course, those plans tend to be a little bit more expensive. But a, a cell phone does more than just take calls, you know? It's like, what's funny is that this, to me, now, looks like a looks like a pager look to me, like 10 years ago, where I'm like, it only does this thing? It only takes calls? What's up with that? I can't even open this thing up to see how I'm being cyber bullied online? What's the point? Now, TV is, a, is another contentious one. And it, it's contentious because I like it more than the average person. Many people. It depends on your situation, okay? If, you, if you're a single guy, bachelor pad sort of situation, you might just have your phone and a computer monitor or multiple computer monitors. I've seen your battle stations. But here's what I like a TV because I like a sofa. And a sofa TV situation is, you know, when you're done with your work for the day, you want to spend time with your family and the people you love, you can go to the living room. You can watch, it doesn't have to be television. You can watch streams, you can watch, you know, movies, you can watch whatever you want. You can watch YouTube on it. Um, you can watch documentaries. I'm not, I'm just trying to say it's not just a place to switch your brain off. Um, so I, I value a TV quite highly. Can you get away with phones, iPads, you know, video game? I mean, a video game console plays this nicely as well. I'm just saying, but I, I put a TV in the good range. It's not essential. You can live without it. Like, for example, I don't, I don't have a TV in our bedroom. There's space for it. But I'm just like, I, don't, I just don't like really what it does in the bedroom. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to watch TV in bed. If I want to watch something, you know, I'm looking like this at my phone anyway. I could just hold it here and then it's 100 inches instead of, you know, 40. But, but for a living room, I, I like it a lot. And like if you're, it's not really good to do in 2020 because, you know, for obvious reasons. But, you know, if you're hosting people, maybe to watch an event of some sort is, is essential. Toaster oven. It's a weird one, right? Like... So I prefer a toaster to a toaster oven, but it's kind of nonsensical because a toaster oven does more than a toaster, but I find that it is worse at making toast. What I do in a toaster oven, what, let me rephrase, what I use a toaster oven and a toaster for are the same thing. I use them to make toast. You can make other foods, like frozen foods, you can cook them in the toaster oven. They could turn out really well, but I'd rather do them in the oven. Although the oven does take longer to preheat most of the time. It, like nachos in the toaster oven, they turn out great. Don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a more general appliance. It's, got, it, it's much better than a hot plate. That's not even close. Um, but I, 95% of the time I use either of these, I'm just making toast. The toaster is literally like perfectly toasted. The toaster oven, some, you got to flip it depending on the way the elements are set up. It's much easier to burn. But I got to say, I think these are both kind of in the, I'm going to put them in the little bad tier. Now, and I'll admit, the same things that apply here, apply here. Uh, toaster and toaster oven. Toaster oven should probably be up here, but I don't use it that much. And these are my rankings. The toaster, I want to put up here, but logic is getting me to put it back down. The thing is, I use I make toast a lot more than I make bread <laughs> or smoothies. So... That's why I put the toaster up there. Toilet is not even close. This is up here in the astounding tier. If you got a problem with it, you got a problem. What I'm realizing is there's a big gulf between essential and good. <laughs> not many things come in this little space in the middle here. Uh, now, the vacuum cleaner. You know what? I'm going to put this into the great tier. 
By the way, I, I won't even get into this, but I'm like, I'm amazed at how many people are like, I'll just poop on the ground. I don't feel right for the rest of the day if we're, if we're doing this. The toilet's very important. Um, the vacuum, it's great. It's a lifesaver. It's very convenient. It's so much faster than manually sweeping. But you, it's, it's a lot like these. If you didn't have a vacuum cleaner, you'd survive. You would sweep. I don't know what you would do if you had a lot of carpets. We have, like, no carpets. But <laughs> that truth, truth be told, if you have carpets, this is probably an astounding tier. Um, but I would say that this is great for us, for sure. Um, it's a huge quality of life improvement. We could survive without it. Or even it might be, like, time until you miss it. Like, these I would miss in a day. These I would miss in, like, a week. These I would miss in a month or a couple months. These, I'm like, I could take it or leave it for, for years, you know? Anyway, a waffle iron, I gotta be honest, it's kind of in the bad tier. The thing is, waffles are delicious. And actually, we have a waffle maker that was given to us for Christmas last year. Kate uses it to make us waffles probably like once a week or maybe like once every 10 days. And it's sick. I love waffles. But it does only make waffles and maybe like cool sandwiches, right? I like them, but at the same time, here's the, 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 the dude, like, toast is undefeated. Two pieces of bread in the toaster. Waffles, you're cracking eggs, you're putting flour in the batter, you're vanilla extract, you're mixing it up, you're mixing it up. You gotta cook it, you gotta clean the thing after. That's why I put it down here. So you know what? I stand by these rankings. Essential. Computer, fridge, shower, sink, toilet. Very, very, very nice to have. If they're broken, would be bad, but I'd survive for a bit without them. Washer, stovetop, vacuum. Good. Fans and air conditioners, the dryer and the television. Could live without them, but would rather not. Middle range, in some situations, you know. A dishwasher is always nice. You know what? We're, we're bringing dishwasher up one. Ceiling fan, space heaters, your oven, instant pot, rice cooker. Little bad, bathtub, don't need it. Coffee maker, haven't used it in forever. Chest freezer, it's got its pluses and minuses, it's not practical for us. I don't iron, don't respect it. Useful but niche. Bad, a sometimes foods. And a paper shredder. God awful, this, like this whole thing, this whole category looks like like my grandma's sewing room from 1999. This is tuned to an AM radio station. She's making some quilts. She's got a lamp she bought in 1973 and a desk phone. Like this is, this is you know, you got to get with the times. Anyway, this has been a longer video than expected. Thank you, Sir Toasty, for making this yourself. Um, you can just search household appliances tear maker. Sir Toasty Toes. You put that into Google. You can do this ranking yourself and share it. Apart from that, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these tier lists, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more of these in the future. But for now, I'm just going to say click the like button. It's the single best way to tell YouTube, hey, we're making good stuff here. Show it to more people. For now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. See ya.